In more ways than one, the crow's eye is deceptive. You start out thinking it's going to be just another first-person horror game set in an old abandoned building. But that ends up not being the case at all. What could have been full of jump scares and evil monsters is actually a thoughtful and stirring game about exploration and discovery. And just when you think you have it all figured out, everything gets flipped on its head and you realize that this story is not what it appears. Although it's a little unclear at first, the crow's eye tells the story of a silent man who has decided to break into a mysterious university to find clues to the whereabouts of his missing father. It's been a couple decades since the two last spoke, and our hero suspects that something sinister has happened in the now abandoned building. This theory gains traction as he learns that other people have been reported missing, and he fears that one of the scientists may have something to do with all of these disappearances. In a lot of ways, the crow's eye reminds me of a combat-free version of Bioshock. We're exploring a university that has seemingly been vacant for a number of years. Something horrible has happened here, and it's clear that nobody has gone through to spruce the place up. We spend most of our time wandering the halls looking for letters and voice recordings that'll help fill in the gaps and shed light on a scientific conspiracy. And, occasionally, we'll get helpful advice from somebody who seems to have a working knowledge of the building's layout. The story may be unique, but the way it's told will be familiar to fans of Ken Levine. But unlike Bioshock, the crow's eye has a real emphasis on puzzle solving. It starts out with the usual locating keys and finding safe combinations, but quickly moves on to pushing crates and crafting useful items. At one point, we're able to construct an electromagnetic device that can manipulate objects and be used like a grappling hook. This opens up what we're able to do in some fun ways, and it makes it feel a little bit different from most of the games in the genre. When we're not using the electromagnetic power to pull objects and fly past bottomless pits, we're forced to deal with a bunch of first-person platforming sections. This is where the game began to fall apart for me. We're able to slow down time and jump farther by using a boost syringe, but most of the sections involve leaping from one moving platform to the next. First-person games are rarely good at this style of action, and the crow's eye is no exception. Even with the boost, I found that jumping wasn't always responsive and landing is often imprecise. They also repeat the same ideas in these sections a few too many times, to the point where it sometimes felt like filler. For as compelling as the story is, it's a little frustrating how familiar everything feels. Between the puzzles, creepy locations, and audio logs, you'll recognize a lot of the tropes found in the crow's eye. Even some of the twists felt like they were ripped out of other games. The good news is that I rarely notice this, since the pacing is quick and it's always good about throwing you into a new section of the sprawling university. It wasn't until I finished the game that I pondered its mechanics and began to notice the similarities. Of course, by that time you've already wrapped up a truly fascinating story with a sinister ending. Oddly enough, my main complaint has little to do with the originality or platforming sections, but rather the voice acting. Don't get me wrong, most of the cast does an excellent job, but the amount of hammy overacting involved with one character had me rolling my eyes. The game's main villain seemed to be doing his best impression of the Joker, which is almost laughably bad at times. It's the kind of performance that would have felt right at home in one of those Arkham games, but not here. It turned a menacing character into something of a cartoon. I'm warning you. I'm not going to intervene during the level. I trust you're not going to chicken out now. <laughs> That performance is one of the few issues I had with the presentation. I generally liked the look of the university and found a lot of it to be incredibly spooky. The fact that there are so many interesting locations to explore also helped, as did the simple yet effective score. And again, most of the voice acting is fantastic, which helped me enjoy the dozens of audio logs scattered around the campus. This is a good looking and sounding game, and there's some truly disturbing moments that are heightened by the art direction. Much like Bioshock and other similar games, the best thing about The Crow's Eye is the storytelling. Although the setup isn't especially original, it ends up going in some crazy directions I didn't see coming. 
It has an instantly compelling setting that is full of creepy moments and over-the-top characters. Of course, you've seen a lot of these elements before, but that shouldn't keep you from getting to the bottom of this mystery. Just don't go in expecting a lot of scares. Hey, thanks for watching our review. So, maybe you've heard that YouTube is getting rid of annotations on May 2nd. Well, that doesn't sound like a big deal, it's gonna force me to change the way I deal with these outros. I'm either gonna have to redesign the layout or just show the old videos without actually linking anything. In the meantime, I have a lot of reviews lined up for the next week and that new Iron Fist show to watch. So, do me a favor and click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then...